Do you want to build insanely cool inventions without having to deal with any other people to do it? If so, you might enjoy mechatronics engineering. This enriching field meshes mechanical, software, and electrical engineering to create some of the most well-rounded engineers around the globe. Yes, we're talking Tony Stark levels of engineering, but it's gotta be super tough to learn all the skills of three different engineering fields, right? Is it even worth it? And what does the day-to-day -day of a real-life mechatronics engineer actually look like? We're here to explain all of this and more to help you decide if you'd enjoy mechatronics engineering. I'm Engineer Joe, welcome to Engineering Insiders. First things first, let's get everyone up to speed. What does a mechatronics design look like? A mechatronics design really can be simplified down to a control system, which takes input from the real world, makes a decision about it, and then physically does something based off of that input. But we aren't talking any old control system found in a textbook. We're talking one that uses the grit of mechanical engineering, efficiency of computer science, and discrete nature of electrical hardware. For example, this could be a 3D printer, robotics design, or even an autonomous underwater vehicle, or AUV for short. Let's take the navigation and propulsion systems on an AUV to get some good insight on how a mechatronics design really works. Let's say our specialized AUV is miles below sea level, tirelessly searching for undiscovered life. After hours of searching with no luck, our AUV senses a giant oceanic beast near it and quickly turns course to investigate. But how does an autonomous vehicle know how to do this? Great question. It all has to do with that control system we talked about. First, acoustic and camera sensors that spied the beautiful beast use electrical signals to send their data to the brain of the operations, a microprocessor. Signal processing ensues, and microseconds later, our system understands that this is the movement that it's been waiting for. So then the processor makes the bold decision to investigate the beast. In other words, it sends electrical signals out to the propellers to follow that movement. Now, if you blinked, you might have missed the mechatronics design amidst the chase. The sensors and actuators were the mechanical aspect, the circuitry and hardware connecting them is all the electrical design, and the fast acting signal processing is the software component. But where is the control system I keep talking about? Well, it is the entire system, from the first sensor to the smallest actuator. Everything in this controlled environment is our control system. Pretty sweet, right? If you think so, you should consider mechatronics engineering. But wait, now this is really cool and all, but do you really have to learn three engineering fields to succeed? How is this even possible? Aha, now here is the catch with mechatronics engineering. In a mechatronics degree, you'll have the chance to learn about every single corner of mechatronics, meaning that you can learn about mechanical actuators and chassis, analog digital electronics, microcontroller embedded design, or signal processing, object-oriented programming, machine learning applications, or some combination between all of them. But rarely, if ever, does someone walk out of a degree ready to use every one of these technologies in the field. More typically, engineers specialize in one of these skill sets, like becoming a mechanical mechatronics engineer and having varying levels of proficiency in the others. So there, you will be exposed to all three fields, but you will likely only concentrate in one field. But hey, if you wanna load up your schedule and go full Stark Industries, no one's gonna stop you. But the question still remains, is it worth it to become proficient in three and concentrate in one? Or should you just choose a single field to begin with? Well, ultimately, the answer is up to you, but we've got some more insight to help you decide. Let's get into the day-to-day -day life of a mechatronics engineer, then follow it up with an insider pros and cons list tailored to mechatronics engineering. In the early stages of a mechatronics engineering project, mechatronics engineers collaborate with their team to complete trade analyses that ultimately determine what technologies and resources they'll need to bring the project to life. A ton of decision making is done here, like size, weight, and power requirements, the specific engineering strategies they'll need to accomplish their goals, and what leg up their design is going to have on competitors. After that, it's time to prototype. Because mechatronics engineers have such a wide range of potential concentrations, the design process of one engineer can be completely different from the next. So let's cover them all. Mechanical mechatronics engineers use CAD skills to literally turn the idea into a real 3D design. They'll use their in-depth materials and thermal engineering skills to compare and contrast materials and ultimately decide which one will maximize efficiency for the design. They'll also run structural analysis simulations and when the time comes, physical tests to ensure the device can withstand whichever environment it will be used in. For the AUV, this would likely be vibration, pressure, and impact tests. 
or anything else to simulate what the beasts of the deep could throw at it. But what if our engineer instead was working on the electrical aspects of the design? Well, first off, they'd be collaborating with the mechanical engineers to ensure they're supplying the right control signals to and from the various mechanical devices. They aren't far from the software engineers either, as they are sourcing all the hardware that the hefty programming needs to run on. But enough with collaboration. What do they actually do? Our electrical engineers start drafting up block diagrams and circuit schematics that reflect every single electrical component and connection that goes into the design. Using circuit simulation software like SPICE, these engineers ensure the circuits they've drafted work as intended. They'll sort through tons of component data sheets to find the most efficient power supplies, processors, power converters, and various other components for the application. Once those preliminaries are ironed out, they take everything they've done so far and use a PCB design software like ORCAD or Eagle to transfer the circuit schematic and components into meticulously calculated layers of electrical highways known as a printed circuit board. This is like the electrical version of taking all the pieces of a car and figuring out the exact layout where each piece will be and how it connects to its neighbors for the final product. Sounds like a lot of work, right? Well, it is, but depending on the application, the software team could have it much tougher. The goal of our software mechatronics engineer is simple. They need to devise algorithms that take in the input data, decide what to do with it, and send output signals corresponding to that choice. Pretty easy, right? Not exactly. This input can be extremely challenging to process, from detailed images and video, to three-dimensional acoustic and LiDAR scanning. Just imagine being tasked with getting a computer to interpret a live video. Seriously, signal processing engineers are wizards. Anyways, these software engineers use a whole array of technologies from C, C++, and Python, to MATLAB, Verilog, and sometimes low-level assembly code to get the job done. And many are adept in AI and machine learning as well. Now you might be thinking this sounds really hard. Maybe a dedicated digital signal processing engineer would be a better fit for all this coding. Does our mechatronic software engineer have what it takes to do all this dedicated programming? And the answer is, as usual, it depends. You see, there isn't only one software engineer working on a mechatronics project, but an entire diverse team with differing strengths and weaknesses. Some with signal processing experience, some with microcontroller know-how, some that specialize in assembly code, and the list goes on. But what does this mean for our software mechatronics engineer? Well, at the end of the day, each role needs to be filled, and in most cases, the hiring manager doesn't care whether you got a mechatronics or software or hardware degree. If you have the skills to fill the role and fit with the company, you're probably in. And this isn't just software, this goes for mechanical and electrical too. So the lesson here is to follow whatever you find to be the most interesting and fun. By the way, if you wanna pick what engineering fields and topics we cover in videos like this one, consider supporting Engineering Insiders on Patreon. It only costs a few bucks a month, we are picking new videos weekly, and it really helps us bring more engineering content to you. You can cancel anytime, link is in the description. Getting back to it, we've now covered what Mechatronics is, how it works, and what these engineers actually do in their day-to-day -day jobs. We're almost ready to decide if you would enjoy a career in Mechatronics Engineering. We just need one last thing, the insider pros and cons. Kicking it off with the cons, there are a lot of different areas of technology that you have to learn to become a reliable Mechatronics Engineer. As discussed earlier, you still will most likely concentrate in only one field, but taking engineering classes in three different fields of engineering is really tough. There are no other ways around it. Another downside to mechatronics engineering is the heavy amount of responsibilities that you can end up with. Because mechatronics engineers have proficiency in so many engineering fields, they might be tasked with random tasks throughout a project. Things like fixing some code here, 3D modeling and printing a bracket there, instead of just focusing on one area that they can really grow and thrive in. But wait, what if you like being able to handle whatever is thrown at you? What if you thrive when taking on tough challenges? What if you enjoy being knowledgeable in many different fields? Well, then all of these cons suddenly turn into pros. On that note, let's check out what other advantages this field has to offer. In case you didn't know, mechatronics engineering is actually a relatively new field with a lot of opportunities. First off, you're able to choose what you want to do. Let me give you a scenario. Imagine you enter a mechanical engineering degree and then three years into it, you realize you like software engineering even better. What do you do? Play out the last year of the degree, then get a master's in software? throw away the three years and start fresh in software? Well, if you're a mechatronics engineering student, you don't have to make this decision. As you go through your degree, you get to sample each field, and then come your third and fourth years, you get to decide on whichever one you want. 
In case you're curious, here's a list of just some of the engineering fields that you can get into with Mechatronics Engineering. Now, how many other engineering degrees gives you this much optionality? Not many. Another similar benefit to the field has to do with the skills you gain. Yes, we get it, you're the jack of all trades and can build Iron Man yourself, blah, blah, blah. But seriously, if you're looking to build cool projects around your home or become an entrepreneur and sell your products, Mechatronics Engineering is a great degree to enter. I mean, really, you have the bases down in the three most relevant engineering fields for most modern day consumer devices. Who's to say what you could accomplish with those skills under your belt? The answer is only you. Anyways, the last pro that we'll discuss today is the salary. In the United States, Megatronics engineers pull an average of $104,000 a year, according to Glassdoor, with opportunities to climb to upwards of $140,000 a year. This is not bad at all. And with that, it's time to give your answer. Are you someone that loves a good challenge, wants to become an all-knowing Swiss army knife of an engineer, and contribute to the development of cutting edge technologies in bountiful and diverse fields? If so, then you'd probably love a career as a mechatronics engineer, but you also have some learning to do. Check out our So You Want To Be A Mechatronics Engineer video to get briefed on everything mechatronics. Thanks for watching and happy engineering everybody.